Morning, Indiana and America. How is everybody? I'm doing good because class starts at 10 o'clock. So I got to do my papers at the last minute, like little short paragraphs or whatever. Then I sent it through email and I had to analyze one short story. Shit, that fucking poster. Let me see if that fucking poster fucking stays because I need fucking posters for my background. So just, just, just wait a minute. Damn tape. That's the last time I'm being taped from that bookstore. Ugh. I don't want to like bang on the wall because I think the person's getting irritated that I'm like knocking. See, they knock again, like trying to be like sarcastic and funny. But I have to like, like knock so I can like get things. You know, it's it. It's one, two, three, oh, what the fuck ever. If it fucking falls, it fucking falls. I have to get new fucking tape. But I need, I just, you know, I'm just, I've been trying to like have a, um, like background, um, you know, just keep my room clean so I can just do these videos. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I had to do Battle Royal. And that's probably one of the most disturbing pieces that I have ever read. I've read it plenty of times before, before in a vis Invisible Man. And yeah, that's kind of what I'm going to go into. This whole ideal of white womanhood and how it's always put above black women in particular. Without anti-blackness and misogyny, white women would not be in the predicament that they are in. For instance, I was talking the other day to my mom about Empire. First of all, I don't like how they are handling Andre's storyline. Not necessarily because of the bipolar. I mean, it's one of the issues, but another issue is, is how they are handling the interracial relationship. I feel that Lee Daniels, as problematic as he really is, it's very problematic to how he really wants Rhonda to be this redeeming character for Andre, basically this type of woman that will hold a man down. And so much of black Twitter is praising Rhonda because, oh, she, she, she is such a strong white woman. Oh God, dangerous. You know, because it's bad to be a strong black woman, of course, you know, the ableist archetype, but you put it on a white woman then suddenly it's positive. Suddenly anything that is inherently anti-black and misogynistic is positive if it's on the white woman. You know, going back to the whole crack babies, you know, the ideal that, um, it says something in an article where crack babies weren't necessarily a dread or something about crack mothers. And because of that new research, they made a white woman, a white woman's pregnant belly the face of, you know, healthy babies that um, were on cocaine because of their mothers being on cocaine, even though like there has been a high percentage of black women being demonized because of the crack baby crap from the 80s, you know, that type of thing. But um, yeah, all of this ableism where, oh, I could never be with a black man with that much issues, you know, the slurs like crazy, just saying that a black woman cannot handle that type of situation where there has been times where black women have been able to handle situations where they couldn't really take care of themselves or their husbands, but they've tried. And, you know, it's a thankless job to be a black woman, especially in a relationship. I've never really understood relationships but I know what it is like, you know, to be a black woman with a black man and just not be given the credit that you really deserve. And how people are like, you know, Rhonda and Andre are good for each other. I told my mom they could have easily written a black woman and I'm really upset because he got rid of Jamal's white Latino boyfriend apparently. But then they're trying to make Rhonda out to be this white woman because like they are trying to prove something that, oh, not all white women are gold digging, racist, misogynistic assholes. You know, this person is good, whatever. Um, 
you know, I just don't like it. I don't like it at all. And I, I, I wouldn't have written it that way. Another issue that they've been talking about was how accurate Andre's break was portrayed. Now, I'm not going to speak on it because, you know, I'm not diagnosed with bipolar, but, you know, I kind of understand the whole meltdown, the mood swings. But I just want to say, as someone who has had meltdowns before and attacks, I don't really like that people are saying, well, I know someone with bipolar for years and they don't act the way Andre does on the show. I hate when people do that. I hate when people say that because they know someone with a type of mental illness or disorder that apparently that's how a mental illness should be portrayed and everyone works differently. And I'm not saying that Andre's portrayal is accurate. What I am saying is that I don't want to hear from able-bodied people that that's not what a disorder is because they saw a friend with it and they didn't act the way they acted. Because as someone with something like autism, I've had people tell me, well, I have a friend who acts a different way than you, so that can't be autism. That must be something else. Like, I really hate when people say that, and it's very problematic. Now, Andre's portrayal of bipolar is exceptionally problematic but then there are able-bodied people saying well that's not what bipolar is like you know like not all bipolar people act like that or act erratic as how people would say and it's like there are times where people are triggered into such a way where you know they may they may act in a way that may throw you all uh, you know People have those moments, you know, I've had my moments of triggers and breakdowns, you know, I'm not going to pretend like I haven't. So to sit there and pretend like, you know, everyone's always calm and like no one just randomly just has outbursts, it does not sit well with me because you can't really just say, well, that's not what this is because I've never seen someone act the way they act. And you know, Hollywood does have an issue with portraying mental illnesses, but hearing it from able-bodied people trying to define what bipolar or other mental illnesses are is unsettling. I want to hear it from other people with bipolar disorder or mental illnesses, not from able-bodied people who are speculating what it may be. So that's briefly what I wanted to say about that. But anyway, when I was talking to my mom about Rhonda, I was saying they could have really written a black woman on the show with Andre's character. It wouldn't have been far-fetched. She kept telling me that it was realistic that a black man who went to a high institution would marry a white woman because there's not many black people there, which is utter bullshit. Because even though I am someone who is like, probably the only black person in, in a class, you know, I understand that, you know, you talk to people who you are around, who you are close to, but to sit there and lie and say that there are no black people in a high institution is very insulting. It does a disservice to many black women who go to those institutions. And a lot of times they really can't find black men because a lot of black women don't really care to be in interracial relationships the way black men do care, you know, and to say that there aren't many black women at those high institutions when really there are, you probably just think they are ugly or too geeky or just, you know, just too wild for you and you want to have someone, you know, who's white and blonde and who holds you down, pretty much does all of the things that a black woman could do, but because she's white and suddenly she appeals more to you. And I just feel like why do they make Rhonda a fucking white woman? Like, that's so fucking stereotypical. It's a fucking trope. And it's like, not every success, successful black man is with a white woman. That's what I'm trying to say. And she keeps trying to tell me that it's realistic. You know, I wouldn't mind interracial relationships being portrayed by white women and black men if it wasn't so re 
enforcing of massage and wa, anti-blackness, colorism, all types of destruction in the black community that goes back to black women, that goes back to women like me, that goes back to other women like me. So it's not so much that people don't like interracial relationships. No one says that. People are saying that when it comes to the tropes of interracial relationships in the black community, it is usually done to attack black women, you know, to incite violence. You know, I don't care if someone says I'm ugly. I care of the effects of someone calling black women ugly. Like, I will ask people, you know, do you think black women are pretty? Like, do you like black women? And someone is like, oh, that person is engaged or, oh, that person has a girlfriend. But I didn't ask that, you know, for my interest. I asked because I, I, I want to know, like, am I fucking with someone that sees me as a person, someone worth valuing? That's what I am asking. Like, when I ask if certain rappers like black girls or dark skinned girls, I'm not asking just for my interest. I'm literally saying that because, you know, I want to be able to fuck with someone you know, or, you know, fuck with an artist, you know, fuck with a celebrity, you know, knowing that this is someone who sees me in all facets. Because there are people who say, well, I like black women, like I, I like black women, but I just find them unbearable. There are people like that. Oh, I like black women. I just won't date them. Why not? Why won't you date a black woman? Just because I'm not attracted to them. But why aren't you attracted to them? Because I find white women beautiful. I find them. I, I, it's, it's not even about black women being attractive. It's just about whoever you find beautiful. But why is that? It's because in the media, we are socialized. One, women of color are socialized to wanting to be like Cinderella or Snow White, delicate white women. And men of color are socialized to wanting to protect those women like it's heroic. That's what Bad Dominicana once said on her Twitter, that men of color are socialized to want to save privileged women who are already protected versus underdogs like black women and dark skinned women and women who aren't cis, trans women. You know, they want to protect women that are already privileged, who have power over poor, disadvantaged women. As someone with lighter skin, you know, as someone who's not considered dark skin, I still have those insecurities because as someone who grew up not liking the color of their skin because I was like a, a brown color, I was, you know, a medium brown and I always thought of myself as darker skin. You know, I can easily, you know, I understand the effects of colorism and the self-esteem issues with black girls darker than me. And even with mixed girls, you know, who are lighter skin or may have Eurocentric features or non-black features, you know, anti-blackness and colorism and phenotype bias doesn't just appeal to dark skinned people. It, it appeals to anyone who is black. You know, it goes beyond just skin color, but it definitely affects darker skinned girls. I'm trying to see what time it is so I can get something to eat. But... I just don't like how some people think it isn't a problem to talk about interracial relationships that may harm black women because I constantly critique black women who say, well, I am dating a white man because black men just don't treat me right. I understand that, but I don't like this notion that white men are somehow magically going to treat a black woman better. I don't like that narrative. I've never liked that narrative and I will shut it down. It's the same thing when black men think that white women are magically going to treat them better. But it's different because it's, it's not as detrimental for black men, for a black woman to date outside of her race because of some issues she had with a black man. Because someone said that a lot of times darker skinned women end up with lighter skinned men just because it just happened. A lot of black women do not have options where they can say, well, I want to date a darker skinned man. man. I want to date a man of my race. You know, they don't really get that option to say, oh, I like black guys and I want to date black guys. Because then you got black guys that like white girls 
and then they want to date white girls. So then it's hard to really create that connection with someone who wants to date someone who is deemed more beautiful than you. And that's why black women get mad when they see, they don't really get mad, but they feel some type of way when they see a black man with a white woman. And it's not all, but a great portion because it's like, at to bouté. In this society, white men have already told us that we weren't good. And white men are considered the powerful men that you want to be saved by. I used to fall into that bullshit, not anymore. But, you know, it's like, wow, like, they don't want me. And then people in my own race who I, you know, think I can have solidarity with don't want me. They want women, you know, who are oppressors, who hurt, who hurt me, and not just me, but you as well. So I, I just don't get that. It's, it's a what the fuck moment to a lot of us when you see a black man praise racist white women. Like that tweet of that Italian woman where she was calling some black woman a nappy headed monkey and that we were mad at her because she she takes black men and black men want her oppressive lynch happy ass. And I, I will call every white woman who says some ugly shit like that lynch happy because these are the type of white women where if it, if this were fucking 1930 something, they would sit there. Someone come in. They would sit there and like say, well, this, this black man raped me, falsely accused him of rape or pull some sort of white woman a la Emma Till and you know, like they are the type and I know they are the type. So I'm like, why are you sitting there on your high horse acting like that you're not a horrible person? And I said, you know, justice will be served if she dies. Cause women who spew misogyny and violence towards black women, the most oppressed, um, protected women in the society, I, I just don't really have much empathy for people like that. I don't, I just do not. And then she, I was looking at her Instagram, she has a son and he's white passing, but he's clearly biracial. Like her husband, you know, is a black man and he's light skinned. So she's colorist. She says something about dark skinned niggas where, well, they talk about light skinned niggas, but they want a family of a white woman and a light skinned baby. I'm thinking, bitch, you're not fucking black. Why the fuck are you weighing in on the topic of colorism? Like, I don't get it. I don't. Like, bitch, you're fucking not. Like, this is why I don't understand with down ass white bitches where they want to weigh in on the topic of colorism. Like, bitch, get the fuck out. Like, it, I'm not even saying that it's entirely white women because you know it's black men with the misogynoir. They create misogynoir and white women aren't making them any more or less of a horrible person as they've already been conditioned to, but they're, they're, they're certainly not helping. You know, I don't want to be around oppressors like that. I don't, you know, there's white women that I like, that I enjoy, that I talk to. A lot of white women that I do relate to happen to be neurodivergent, you know, disability activists. So then we have common ground with that, but able-bodied neurotypical white women, <laughs> you can forget it well in most cases but i just don't have respect for many people even some black women you know who are colorists in fact well i really don't like many people in that first in the first place but i was trying to make a quick video i gotta go eat breakfast but um tell me your opinion sorry if i talked too fast and rambled on and on but that's what i wanted to say um yeah good day